Right, so we have uh, a problem today. You can see here. So let's read the question at first. Um, in an industrial facility, air to be preheated before entering a furnace by geothermal water at 120 degrees centigrade. And it is flowing through the tubes of a tube tank located in a duct. The air enters the duct at 20 degrees centigrade and one atmosphere pressure. The mean velocity is given uh, 4.5 meter per second and flows over the tubes in normal direction. So you can see the schematic um, at the right hand side. Uh, you see the number of tubes, the tube banks and the arrangement, this is in line. And we can see all the informations there. Um, you see the surface temperature is given 120. The velocity, the pre mean velocity is 4.5. And air in light temperature is 20 degrees centigrade. The, you know, the transverse ST and the longitudinal distance is given. It's 5 meter, 5 centimeters. So that's the same. ST and SL, this is same. The diameter of the tube, it is given 1.5 meter. And the tube, the outer diameter, it is 1.5 meter. There's given an STSL given. There are six rows. So you can see from the schematic six rows. And in each row, there are 10 tubes. So that means in total, um, 60 tubes. All right. So we need to determine the rate of heat transfer per unit length of the tube. Keep in mind the term per unit length that means l equal on and it says we need to calculate the pressure drop that's um, easier so i will not show you the question again um, so you can see here the schematic from the right hand side of this slide it is um, actually the surface temperature of the tube given we know the air in light temperature but you see we don't know the air air outlet temperature we know the diameter of the tube in STSL, it is also given. And that's it. We know we have six rows of a tube and in each row, we have 10 tubes. That means six into 10, 60 over uh, 60 tubes. So now we'll start um, solving this problem. So if you can remember, so far when we solved any problem, we tried to follow some guidelines. So it's Initially, we write down the assumptions, then properties, then analysis. Here, we actually need the rate of heat transfer, which is, like, say, Q equal Hayes A. And we know this is uh, from Newton's second law of motion, hey, Newton's law of cooling. So it is Hayes A delta T. That's the arithmetic you know, temperature difference. But here, we will use the log mean temperature. So let's say LM, delta T LM. When we will do heat exchangers chapter, then I will explain. But log mean temperature difference is good here because um, this will give you more accurate results. Because, you know, throughout the tubes, actually, we have the banks of tubes like this. So, and it is... Um, uh, maybe let's say 10 meter long tube so throughout the channel line temperature usually varies from inlet to outlets so it's better to use the log mean temperature difference this which is more accurate so now if we want to calculate this actually you see the rate of heat transfer we need haze area and log mean temperature difference so what is log mean temperature difference the formula is Actually, the surface temperature and the exit temperature minus surface temperature minus inlet temperature over, you know, ln the same term Ts minus Te over, you know, Ts minus Ti. So this is actually the formula for log mean temperature difference. So here you can see, guys, we know the inlet temperature from the formula from the question the inlet temperature is given 20 and the surface temperature is 120 so we don't know the exit temperature so last 
I think, uh, I can't exactly remember the week, but a couple of weeks back, we used this formula for exit temperature. For exit temperature, we know this formula. It is Ts minus Ts minus Ti and the exponential term negative the surface area transfer coefficient mass flow rate and a specific heat we know this okay so once we know this uh, this formula so you see the exit temperature is unknown so we can calculate the exit temperature from here and once we know the exit temperature you see if we want to get this exit temperature we need the the mass flow rate and the surface area so now we need to calculate the mass flow rate m and once we have the mass flow rate then we need to calculate the surface area and to, we need then haze the heat transfer coefficient so we need haze so if we calculate haze how we can get that to get haze we need to calculate the nozzle number to get the nozzle number we need to calculate the reynolds number and to get the reynolds number we need to calculate the velocity so that's the total you know the flow jet here we are going to follow at first uh, we will calculate the velocity here um during the lecture i already explained actually how to get the velocity here we actually need the maximum velocity um and I already explained during my lecture why we need the maximum velocity. So we will calculate the maximum velocity at first. Then we will calculate the Reynolds number, then nozzle number, then haze, then surface area, then mass flow rate. Then we will calculate the exit temperature. Then we will calculate log mean temperature. And then finally we will get the cube, the rate of heat transfer. So it's quite lengthy problem. All right. So at first um, we have the tubes like this and we know the tube surface temperature 120 the air temperature is 20 degrees centigrade and the velocity is 4.5 meter per second okay so number of tube um number of you know rows we know six and number of tubes in each rows is 10 so okay let's uh, say the assumptions so assumptions is as usual say it is a steady state operating conditions and secondly say the the properties or the let's say the surface temperature of the tube is equal to the geothermal water okay or and the other one you can say the properties are constant properties are constant all right so now we need to calculate the properties actually here this is the tricky part you know guys so far when we solved any problem we calculated the mean temperature or the film temperature but here in this question uh, we have the bank of tubes like this yeah so we have six rows so it's like this we know the inlet velocity is 20 degrees centigrade the air air temperature but we don't know the outlet temperature okay so this outlet temperature is unknown then how we can uh, get the mean temperature so we will assume here so our assumption is we will assume that the mean temperature the mean temperature it is equal 60 degrees centigrade you can ask me why you uh, select 60 degrees centigrade i just assume now you can ask me can we take another temperature yes you can but we will solve it and we will see at the end whether our assumption is correct or not so it's kind of trial and error so you can ask me okay, the, okay this is your assumption so why you are not taking 50 yes you can take 50 if you want then you can take 50 i just took it as um 60 because the surface temperature it uh, you, you look here um the temperature here is 20 and it is 120 degrees centigrade the surface temperature so when at this um outlet the temperature will definitely will be less than 120 so i just took half of this 100 120 surface temperature so i said okay it will drop some it will lose the temperature and maybe at the outlet temperature will be 60 that's it so at 60 degrees centigrade temperature um the properties the air properties you know when uh, you know 
from the table A15 at 60 degrees centigrade temperature, we can write the thermal conductivity. It is equal 0 0.02808. It is watt per meter Kelvin. The density is 1.059 kg meter cube. The Prandtl's number is 0 0.7202 and uh, the specific heat it will be 1.007 kilojoule per kz kelvin the dynamic viscosity it will be 2.008 and 10 to the power negative 5 kz per you know meter second and the brandle number at surface temperature we say as we say 120 degrees centigrade of the tube you see guys tube surface temperature is 120 so at 120 degree centigrade temperature, the Prandtl number for the tube surface, it will be 0 0.7073. You can ask me why you are um, just extracting or calculating the Prandtl number for surface temperature. Uh, this is actually we need because we know the Nusselt number correlations. Uh, it has the surface, the ratio of the Prandtl number and the surface Prandtl number. All right, so the other thing is, if you can remember here, uh, for some point, we need to calculate the mass flow rate M. So to calculate the mass flow rate, we need the the density of the fluid at inlight condition. So at inlight condition at or at inlight temperature, which is 20 degrees centigrade. So this is the inlight temperature of the air. So the density, let's say rho on it will be 1.204 kg per meter cube so that's actually at 20 degree centigrade temperature we need the the density because if we want to calculate the mass flow rate it should be at inlet we need to calculate the mass flow rate at inlet so we need the density at inlet temperature so at 20 degree centigrade temperature we got the density so that's all the properties now uh, we will start with the analysis. So the analysis here, if you look here guys, initially I said we at first we will calculate the velocity, maximum velocity and then Reynolds number. I explained why we need the, um, you know, the maximum velocity. So I'm not going to discuss it again. So the maximum velocity is the ST, the distance, the transverse distance and st minus d diameter minus into v <coughs> this is the mean velocity so st we know um it is given five centimeter okay so that means 0 0.05 meter it is 0 0.05 meter minus d diameter is 0 0.015 um, it is given meter and the velocity mean velocity is 4.5 meter per second it is given all these values are given oh, we discussed I, when i showed you the question then i said it is so the maximum velocity we got it is 6.43 6.43 meter per second so this is the max velocity all right so we got the max velocity now according to the flow chart we will calculate the reynolds number so now if we calculate the reynolds number we know from the formula you know the Reynolds number is actually the density, the maximum velocity, the diameter, and kinematic visco dynamic viscosity. <coughs> um, you already know why you need to use the maximum velocity. So density is one point zero five nine. The maximum velocity is we just calculated six point four three, and the diameter is zero point zero one five, and dynamic viscosity. 2.008 and 10 to the power minus 5. So we got the Reynolds number is 5086. So we got the Reynolds number. So we can say the flow is uh, <coughs> the Reynolds number we got 5.08. So now once we know the Reynolds number, then the next part is we need to calculate the uh, Nusselt number because uh, we look the flow chart actually we need haze the heat transfer coefficient. So it is function of nozzle number so we will calculate the nozzle number at first now we need we have many correlations for inline and staggered arrangement so with you know the correlation we should use 
so look the nozzle number here and now if you um look the all the correlations here uh, this is the table uh, actually for the nozzle number correlations for cross flow over the tube so our calculated value of the reynolds number it is you see in this for the inline arrangement this is in this third third row is like 1000 to 2.20 10 to the power 5 so it will be the nozzle number is um you see the nozzle number d it is equal 0 0.27 Red 0.63, Pr 0.36, and Pr Prs over 0 0.25. So now uh, we will just um, go here. So the nozzle number for this Reynolds number from the table um, it is 0 0.27, and Reynolds number power is 0 0.63. The Prandtl number power is 0 0.36 into the ratio of PR and PRS over 0 0.25. So initially, you can remember we calculated this PRS. This is actually at 120 degrees centigrade temperature. That means the surface temperature. So here we have each and every values. So we'll substitute the values. So 0 0.27. Reynolds number is 5086 and the power is 0 0.63. Prandtl's number we know 0 0.7202. It is 0 0.36 and the Prandtl number is again 0 0.7202 and the surface Prandtl number is 0 0.7073 and the power is 0 0.25. So we got the nozzle number is 52.1. So we got the nozzle number, guys. Now, um, we discussed um, during my lecture, uh, actually, whatever we are solving, the nozzle number, this nozzle number, actually the correlation, it is applicable, it is valid for the number of rows which is greater than 16. Okay, it is great, it is, it is, applicable if the number of rows is greater than 16 but in this problem we have only you know the one two three four five six only six rows but this is valid only if the number of rows is greater than 16 so then what we will do so there are some you know solutions so still we can use this but we need to use some um, the correction factors and if we multiply the correction factor with the nozzle number, then we can use. However, it is not satisfying this condition. So the, you know, the correction factors here, it is, you see this table 7.3. Um, this is actually the, the first row. It is for number of rows. You see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 6 is not here, but we have 5 and 7. So we need to do some interpolations in between 5 and 7. And up, once we did that, this interpolation, we got this value. The F is, you see for 5 it is 0 0.93, for 7, 9, 6. So we did the interpolation and we got it is 0 0.945. So we will use the corrections factor F, okay? So from the table, so the table um, 7.3, we use the correction factor F equals 0 0.945. And once we use this correction factor, then the nozzle number, it will be F and U D. So 0 0.945 and N U D it is 52.1. So the nozzle number is 49.3. So once you have this nozzle number, then you can easily calculate the the you know the haze you know from the formula nozzle number is haze d over you know the k isn't it we can write it like this so this is actually the formula of nozzle number we normally know this is the formula so can i can i write it like this um Hayes, it is equal the thermal conductivity nozzle number over 
the diameter from this correlations yes we can so thermal conductivity is 0 0.028 uh, 0 0.02828 nozzle number is 49.3 and diameter is 0 0.015 so we'll get h is equal 92.2 watt per meter square kelvin this is actually uh, the heat transfer coefficient so guys uh, you look here we got this haze heat transfer coefficient we got the nozzle number we got the reynolds number we got the velocity so that means we have done up to this now we need to calculate the surface area okay and the mass flow mass flow rate why we need it because it is if we want to calculate the exit temperature we need this so now we will calculate the the surface uh, area surface area so the surface area a is it is equal the number of you know tubes into the area what is the area pi d l if you can remember the question asked calculate the it transport for unit length isn't it for per unit length so l it, it will be equal to one now how many tubes we have we have six rows and ten tubes in each row so number of tubes is 60 so n it will be 60 here <coughs> so now um what we will write a is equal 60 into pi into d is 0 0.015 and l equal 1 so the surface area it will be 2.827 meter square now we will calculate the mass flow so the mass flow m it is equal you know the formula it is pretty straightforward the density of the inlet at 20 degrees centigrade temperature the velocity and the area so area is here number of tubes and the distance st transfers distance and l because uh, we have um, you know the tubes in is rows 10 tubes the distance st 0.5 meter and the length of the tube there's actually the the surface area the area the area not surface area so here density is um for 20 degrees centigrade temperature it is 1.204 velocity you can remember it is 4.5 number of tube is 10 st is uh, 0 0.05 and l equal for per unit length one so the mass flow we will get it is 2.709 kg per second so we got the mass flow rate now guys we are almost done with the exit temperature so we have the mass flow we have the surface um, area so now if we write here the exit temperature is say te it is equal the surface temperature minus ts minus ti <coughs> and the exponential form of negative as has minus the mass flow rate and specific heat so just substitute all the values it is 120 it is 120 inlet temperature is 20 degrees centigrade the exponential form the surface area is 2.827 and the haze is 92.2 mass flow rate is 2.709 and specific heat um it is 1007 so we will get the exit temperature is 29.11 degrees centigrade now come to the point uh, we initially we will still continue with this but if you can remember we cons considered the main temperature is 60 um but the inlet temperature is 20 and it is let's say 29.1 over 2 so it is more or less you know almost 24.6 degrees centigrade so our assumption is far from the real values 
but still let's continue um if you want um you can do this again you can consider the values something like 25 degrees centigrade and you can continue the whole calculation but still um you can continue just as it is that's some sort of error from the calculations so now we got the exit temperature once we got the exit temperature guys look here um once we got this exit temperature then we will calculate the log mean temperature and then we will get the q there are another way then we can use but let's use this log mean temperature difference so the delta t lm we said this is actually the log mean temperature difference the formula is it is easy it is the surface temperature and the exit temperature minus the surface temperature and the inlet temperature over ln surface temperature minus exit temperature over surface temperature minus inlet temperature so that's that's the actual value um now we know surface temperature is 120 exit temperature is 29.11 minus it is 120 it is 20 uh ln it is 120 it is 29.11 over it is 20 120 it is 20 so that's it and now the log main temperature is 95.4 degrees centigrade so this is delta t l m so we got the log main temperature difference and now we have done with the solution the rate of heat transfer the rate of heat transfer it will be q equal case a delta t l m we know has um we calculated initially has equal um you know the the value we calculated is 92.2 and the area is we calculated 2.827 and the log mean temperature difference is 95.4 so the rate of heat transfer it will be 2.49 and 10 to the 4 4 watt so this is the rate of heat transfer this is the first part of our problem you can calculate uh, if you actually want to avoid this line the calculations log wind temperature difference then you have other ways um, you can you can solve it uh, by using you know the the muscular rate so the other way you can calculate like this the rate of heat transfer the rate of heat transfer q you can say it is the mass flow rate specific heat and the temperature difference delta t which is the am cp and you know t exit temperature and inlet temperature so you already know exit temperature so you know mass flow rate is 2.709 specific heat is 1007 and exit temperature is 29.1 minus 20 so it will give you the same value 2.49 and 10 to the power forward so that's the other way um you can either use this approach or you can use this approach then you don't need to calculate this log mean temperature yeah but still you need to calculate the exit temperature so same thing and now um the pressure drop now we will calculate the pressure drop so for pressure drop um actually we know the formula delta p it is equal in l the number of you know there was the fx um the friction value rho b the velocity maximum velocity square over two so what do we need guys we need the value of uh, f from the book um the si unit uh, fifth editions Jingles book 7.27a so from this figure you can get the value of f so to get the f we need the reynolds number so we know reynolds number is 5086 and we need the value sl over d 
it is actually we you know the sl is uh, 5 and d is 1.5 so it is 3.33 so this is the ratio so by using these two values from that table that figure uh, we got the values for friction f is the friction coefficient is 0 0.16 uh, it is actually this f the friction coefficient f is 0 0.16 unfortunately i do not have that figure right now with me but i just write it down this is the the figure number 7.27 a it is the fifth edition si unit chingles heat and mass transfer book the book we are following so we got the f and here um this is a square arrangement so x it will be equal to one for the square arrangement so now the pressure drop we will calculate from the values here it is delta p equal number of rows say this is six and the friction factor friction coefficient is uh, 0.16 into the x equal one density density is 0 0.1.059 and the max velocity is 6.43 square and over it is 2 so it should be 21 pascal so that's actually the delta p the second part of this question so you can add some discussions here because um the assumption we had 60 degrees integrated it's not correct okay so it's it's incorrect um because we found the exit temp in light temperature and exit temperature the ratio it was 24.6 degrees centigrade the main temperature but uh, but we took uh, this temperature is 60 degrees centigrade so it's far from our assumption and if we continue our calculations with this 24.6 or 25 degrees centigrade temperature then uh, we will get the rate of heat transfer is 2.57 and 10 to the power 4 watt so and we will calculate the pressure drop delta p it is uh, 23.5 pascal so the deviations we, our assumption was incorrect but the the result the deviations is not that much here so we can continue and we can accept these results maybe if it is less than 10 percent then it's still it is okay so it was 21 pascal it is 23.5 so it's not that much um so we can still continue with this so what we did guys here you can see it's a lengthy problem uh, we need to do a lot of calculations so it is actually the extra you know inline conditions but um in your final exam or in your next quiz maybe you can get a problem like this like say staggered conditions so now it's the inline so maybe it's like this okay it's not the good drawing yeah like you say something like that so maybe some staggered um, arrangement so that you need to follow but the main thing is it could um, ask you to calculate the pressure drop and definitely the delta p no not the delta p um, the q the rate of heat transfer so that's actually the first problem um, and try to find out some question your tutor will solve a similar problem um, during the tutor sessions and i believe that now it got the total picture of this sort of problem and it was pretty straightforward like we need this so to get this q we need haste a delta t l m so the log mean temperature delta t l m so for delta t l m we don't know the exit temperature so we calculated the exit temperature then we calculate we need the surface area so um for exit temperature we need the mass flow rate so we calculated mass flow rate then we need we calculated the surface area then haze to get haze we need nozzle number then reynolds number then the velocity that's it so it is the total flow chart we followed so i believe you understand what i did 
yeah so if you have any question then maybe you can just you can send me an email